Let me talk a little bit about, about the brain. Okay, the brain sits right there in the skull. We don't think about it much, but this little three pound piece of meat there uses 20% of your energy every day. So three pounds of your body uses up a fifth of your energy, and that's because this is what the center of where being human resides. When I was in medical school, I dropped, I, I did a fellowship in cardiology thinking that, that, human, that the human heart was what I wanted to study, and so I used to look in the chest. And I realized later that that's really not where the human heart is, and so I ended up here in the skull. And we're going to talk a bit about that today. The brain is made up, every brain is made up of about 300 billion neurons, each of which makes between 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 connections. These connections form or do not form depending on what experiences you've had or not had. So your brain, the structure of your brain depends on what kind of life you're living, what kind of experiences you have, what kind of things you consciously cultivate and what kind of things you avoid. So these little connections, synaptic connections is what they're called, are the infrastructure. Now the brain has three major parts. It has well, uh, the front part, which is here is in beige, is the frontal cortex. That's the mind. That's what we think with. That's what we reason with. That's what we do mathematics with. That's what we do music with. That's what we do uh, uh, reading, so on and so forth. That's the human, most human part of the brain. In the middle part of the brain is called, something called the limbic system, which is really where the heart of the matter is, although the connections between the limbic system and the heart are extraordinary. Those of you who have had a heartache know that it literally hurts in the chest. So the signals may be coming from the brain, but the pain is in the chest. But the heart, for our purposes today, is the limbic system, this middle part here that's in the, in the aqua. And in the back, we have the automatic functions of the brain, the brain stem. Those take care of the automatic uh, things like digestion and body temperature and sleep-wake cycles and things like that. That's the body. So if we slice the brain down the middle like this, you can see over here in the light purple is the frontal cortex. Just bear with me. We're going to get somewhere else. In the middle is the limbic system, the emotional center of the brain, the heart of the brain, or the, of, of the tonal, of the person, and then some of the automatic functions. So, the thing that's interesting here is that this maps directly on to the Mesoamerican concept of the tonal. That we each have a heart, we each have a mind, we have a body, and we should have a purpose or a soul. Something bigger than ourselves that we care about. For the purposes of practical use of this tool, we color code the heart as red. It's easy to remember because of the blood. We color code the heart, the mind as green, thinking of a green and creative field, fertile field. The body is blue, that's our genetics. And in, in, in some cases, we can use that same blue line to map legal connections, who we're married to, etc. And then the soul is outlined in yellow, and we can remember that by light. And, and I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail today about that. I just want you to understand that this maps directly onto modern neuroscience, even though it's thousands of years old. We don't have a word in English for these four as a, as a unity. And what happened at the turn of the last century was that Freud, brilliant man, and the European psychologists basically were very, very anti-religion, anti-spirit. They thought it was an infantile drive looking for a father figure. So we took the soul out of American psychology and psychiatry. We took much of the heart out as well. And now it's time that we put it back in. And that's starting to happen. We're starting to study happiness. We're starting to study uh, positive aspects. We've only looked at disease and pathology. We've never looked at what health looks like. And that's part of what I'm here to talk to you about today. It's what a health, healthy human looks like and what their life looks like. And how wherever, whatever st state you're at, you can move to another level. And I hope that some of what I have to say today is going to help you with that, not only in your work life, but in your personal life and in your relationships.